welcome to the third class of chemical happiness and the meaning of life last class we have seen how certain chemicals inside our brain like serotonin dopamine and oxytocin are contributing to human happiness in this class now we are going to see the author is comparing a medieval peasant to a parisian modern banker and how their happiness uh, would be like and he is also going to talk about um, aldous huxley's brave new world george orwell's 1984 like that and he is also going to speak about the meaning of life and the delusions about the meaning of life let's get into the slides compare a medieval french peasant to a modern parisian banker the peasant lived in an unheated mud hut overlooking the local big city while the banker goes home to a splendid penthouse with all the latest technological gadgets and a view to the champs elysees now the author is going to compare a medieval french peasant who is living in a mud hut and has a vision to earth's a local big city while a banker a modern banker who is living in a top flat that is penthouse uh, with all the latest technological gadgets in a luxurious flat he is living and he got a view to the champs elysees and now he is going to say intuitively we would expect the banker to be much happier than the peasant we may think that banker would be much happier than the peasant let's see however mud huts penthouses champs elysees don't really determine our mood if you are living in penthouse or if you are living in mud hut whatever it is our brain actually not um what do you say brain actually is not concerned all those things what brain concerns about the chemical uh, secretions don't really these things don't really determine our mood but what determines our mood serotonin does serotonin the chemical determines our mood when the medieval person completed the construction of his mud hut his brain neuron secreted serotonin bringing it up to level 10 when uh, a thing happened that is construction of the mud hut got happened the brain neurons also secreted serotonin and the level of serotonin came to 10 and in when in 2014 the banker made the last payment on his wonderful penthouse then also brain neurons secreted similar amount of serotonin that means amount of sec- ser- secretion of serotonin was same for modern banker and as well as for um, the medieval peasant it the his serotonin level was also 10 then the happiness level would be same for both peasant and for the modern banker it makes no difference to the brain that the penthouse is far more comfortable than the mud hut brain is not recognizing or distinguishing that uh, penthouse is more comfortable than the mud hut what matters for brain is the chemical things that are happening uh, inside it the only thing matters is that at present the level of serotonin is 10 so the brain would be happy or the people experience the man uh, experience the pleasant sensation and he would be happy consequently the banker would not be one iota happier than his great great grandfather the poor medieval peasant so the banker and uh, peasant experience the same level of happiness banker will not be a little uh, hap- more happier than the uh peasant it will not be like that both the person experience the same level of happiness because their ex- secretion of serotonin was same this is true not only of private lives but also of great collective events now the author is uh, taking us to the example of french revolution a great collective event french revolution te samayath aalkarakke oru baadu changes aa samayath undaaki main aayitte robespierre napoleon leaders avare french revolution de bhangara influence aatla figures ayirunno and um, the people revolutionaries executed the king avare guillotined i louis 16 to mary antoinette they were guillotined and uh, they also gave lands to french revolutionaries gave lands to peasants and they declared the rights of man and they abolished certain privileges of noble class and they waged war against the whole of europe it is ultimately endana people need peace in the country and people need to live happily ഇത് ഒരു കോൺട്രഡിക്ടറി ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെന്റ് ആണ് വരുന്നത് ഇതെല്ലാം ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ആൾക്കാർ ഹാപ്പി ആകും സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് വൈ ദേ ഗോ ഫോർ ദി ദ വെൻ ഫോർ ദി റെവല്യൂഷൻ ബട്ട് ഹിയർ ഓദർ ഇസ് സെയിങ് ദാറ്റ് ദി ഗെറ്റ് നൺ ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് ചേഞ്ച്ഡ് ഫ്രഞ്ച് ബയോ കെമിസ്ട്രി ഇതൊക്കെ നടന്നാലും ആൾക്കാരിലെ ഫ്രാൻസിലുള്ള ആൾക്കാരുടെ ബയോ കെമിസ്ട്രിക്ക് ഒരു മാറ്റവും ഉണ്ടായില്ലാതെ അതുപോലെ തന്നെ മുമ്പോട്ട് പോകും അപ്പോൾ ഈ കാര്യങ്ങളൊക്കെ എന്തിനു വേണ്ടിയിട്ടാണ് നടന്നത് ഹാപ്പിനെസ്സിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ടാണ് പീസിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ പറഞ്ഞാലും ഈ കാര്യങ്ങളൊന്നുമല്ല ആക്ച്വലി നമ്മളുടെ ഹാപ്പിനെസ്സിന് കോൺട്രിബ്യൂട്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നത് 
Consequently, despite all the political, social, ideological and economic upheavals brought about by the revolution, its impact on French happiness was small. These things are not going to happen. Political upheavals and die, changes and die, social changes and die, ideological changes and die, economical changes and die, sudden changes and die, revolution will end. But the impact on French happiness was small. French happiness, France will be able to do happiness. This is a contribute to it. It is really a doubtful case. Those who won a cheerful biochemistry in the genetic lottery were just as happy before the revolution as after. Now, the correct title is cheerful biochemistry or level 8. They are happy at the end of the day. That's why they are happy at the end of the day. They are happy at the end of the day. They are happy at the end of the day. They are happy at the end of the day. They are happy at the end of the day. And those with a gloomy biochemistry uh, complained about Robespierre and Napoleon, new leaders with the same bitterness. Apo gloomy biochemistry all over the influential figures and Napoleon and Pudhi Emperor right to another. Napoleon and Kurchitam, our Paradigal on Dirno, and which they earlier complained about Louis XVI and Mary Antoinette. Mumba were a Mumba the leaders in Ayana, our complaints and Dirna, the Ipol over Pudhi leaders in a Kurcha complain Jeno. Apo biochemistry system. Marah terdorong kalam, awa endak ke macam ni semua hal itu lenda ayam, aduh, mana mungkin manusia dah happiness ni efektif ini lah, got it? And if so, what good was the French Revolution? French Revolution akeh putrain vali sambong lakukan ada nanti ada kah awisian dia erno. If people did not become any happier, then what was the point of all that chaos, fear, blood and war? Biologists would never have stormed the Bastille. Biologists know all these things, the biochemical system inside the body, so they wouldn't wouldn't stormed the best best Bastille. Bastille is a fortress in Paris, and it was stormed by a crowd in 1789. And destroyed it completely. And uh, French Revolution, uh, one of the major landmarks is um, landmark event is uh, Bastille, storming of Bastille. And people think that this political revolution, French Revolution, or social reform will make them happy, but their biochemistry takes them time and again. But the biochemistry system is very important. After the French Revolution, people uh, thought that the uh, French Revolution was very important. But it is very important because the biochemistry system is very important. If you have a revolution, you will have a biochemical system in the level of the revolution. डावम पोना द अब वो इस वाली चेंजेस ओन्नम हैप्पीनेस इन्दे पेरे लो वाली चेंजेस ओन्नम मंडावन पोगन नहीं ला एस पर दी ऑथर पर शे नम के लाम अंगने रो अंगने रो इधरे नम के बिट्टे कल ऐने बच्ची लाये ले अब नम को उन्नम अच्छी भी ऐनों तो नहीं ला इधर के केक में नम के इंदा तो नहीं ना तो नमले apa anggane anjingil, ini serotonin dan secretion kita anu lama irinu aja, tetapi nama l happy aja le, hele. But then anggane anjingil le nama l k inna pula uru progress ondo nama l life le, inda orang inda agan saadi dan dia irni le, that is what I think. Yeah, porut turkum, you may be thinking about a very different idea maybe, okay. There is only one historical development that has real significance today when we finally realize that. The key to happiness are in the hands of our biochemical system. Namade ulit ane ana namade happiness na indawa na itu la saade dagal allah dah. We can stop wasting our time on politics and social reforms, purchase and ideologies, and focus instead on the only thing that makes us truly happy. Apo nam kipi the manslai se dekhe please so we must not enter in politics or social reforms or uh, over the, to an attempt to overthrow a government uh, if you are if you are not supportive of that government and um, please to stop spending time on ideologies talking about it and focus the things which you makes you happy so what do you have to do if you have to manipulate the biochemical system that is what he's going to say now to manipulate a biochemistry uh, to keep make changes in your biochemistry so that you will be happy always if we invest billions in understanding our brain chemistry and developing appropriate treatments we can make people far happier than ever before without any need of revolutions Apo, 
what he is saying that you have to manipulate your biochemistry and uh, you have to invest uh, if we invest many money um, in developing treatments or uh, to study the biochemistry more and more so the people can be made can be made happy so there is no revolution needed nothing is needed people can just sit and relax people people can have the treatments for their biochemistry uh, changes and they can sit and relax and can be happier always Prozac, for example, now he is going to speak about as a drug, Prozac. That is an antidepressant prescribed for people who are suffering from anxiety, depression or panic. tablet And that actually um, prescribed for people who are suffering from anxiety. Tablets, um, now he is going to tell, speak about the example of this medicine. This actually doesn't change the government or system in us but it raises the serotonin levels and it lifts people out of their depression your tablet serotonin levels increase either and people will come out of the depression other neurons in the body color other day serotonin day secretion go to eat all kind of depressed state in the perfect way nothing captures the biological argument better than the famous new age slogan happiness begins within namada ullil thane namada cheerful biochemistry system adinu ullil nanu thaneyana happiness undavunnathu money or social status or plastic surgery beautiful houses powerful positions none of this will bring you happy allengil namada happiness ipo nammal oru karyathinu vendi bayangarayittu aagrahikkana aagrahichu kanya oru sambhavam kitti kanya we will feel a happiness for 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 a moment of time adu kayumbo nammada happiness level pinne nammada normal aayi nammalde aa oru palaye system thilotu thanne pinne vannu nikkum appo 7 aanengi 7 or 10 aanengi 10 nammada biochemistry system ed level aanu stabilize cheyidirikkunathu aa level lotu vannu nikkum lasting happiness comes only from the secretion of serotonin dopamine and oxytocin in aldous huxley's dystopian novel brave new world published in 1932 at the height of the great depression happiness is a supreme value and psychiatric drugs replace the police and the ballot as the foundation of politics now the author is going to speak up speak us about um, brave new world a novel by aldous huxley he is an english writer of 20th century and he is famous for his dystopian work brave new world that is a novel set in ad 2540 500 years nearly 500 years from now and it was written in 1931 by this author aldous huxley and he is speaking and the novel is called as dystopian that is uh, he is speaking about an imagined place everything is unpleasant there everything is unpleasant there or bad there situations are very bad and it is a totalitarian government there and uh, that is opposite to, to the idea of utopian society where everything is good here dystopian means where everything is bad uh, we cannot imagine the situations over there everything is bad over there and the rules are bad mm, oh, totalitarian government is there like that so in the work brave new world happiness is the supreme value and people are given psychiatric drugs each day each person takes a dose of soma a synthetic drug that drug makes the people happy but the dr- drug without harm uh, will not harm their productivity and efficiency but this drug is handed out for all citizens of the world state world state is actually um, is a place there in brave new world but this world state administers the entire planet so this totalitarian government and the world state is actually controlling the earth and soma drug is given to all people in small doses when it taken inside it makes people uh, feeling good but in large doses it creates um, hallucinations sense of timelessness like that 
so people are taking this drug world state that governs the entire globe is never threatened by wars why people are taking this dose and uh, people are always in a hallucinating mood so they are not aware of the uh, laws imposed on them they are happy always so the state is not threatened by wars the totalitarian government there is not threatened by wars or revolutions or strikes or demonstrations all people are happy with the current condition of the world state whatever it may be whatever may be the laws people are happy because they are induced with soma drug they are taking soma drug Huxley's vision of this future of 2450 is far more troubling than George Orwell's 1984 1984 is a work by George Orwell he is also a british novelist of the 20th century and um, his original name was eric arthur blair and his two of his famous novels are animal farm and 1984 1984 is also a dystopian novel that is a uh, situation is very unpleasant or very bad a totalitarian government is ruling and um, uh, and it has uh, also the elements of secret surveillance and it was published in 1949 and you get uh, three slogans in the work that is war is peace freedom is slavery ignorance is strength individuals are motivated to ignore uh, this content uh, with government how the nation is always in a state of war then the individuals are motivated to ignore their um, dissatisfaction with the government and always ensure the unending domestic peace inside the city inside the country as the city is always in a war with another countries so the individuals are motivated to just forget about uh, their um, unhappiness unhappy state with the government and thus it ensures always a domestic peace inside the country that is also the trick of government so vision of huxley's future is very much troubling than the george orwell's 1984 in both the countries or the cities people are manipulated in one country people are given drugs so the people will always be happy and as per the author yuval noah harari this is more troubling huxley's vision of future is more troubling Huxley's world seems monstrous to most readers. It seems very much wrong or evil to most of the readers. But it is hard to explain why everybody is happy all the time. What could be wrong with that? Don't know uh, why the author is thinking like that. Everybody is happy. So what can be wrong with that? Ultimately people need to be happy. So people are happy there. Huxley's disconcerting world his unsettling world is based on the biological assumption that happiness equals pleasure Huxley's idea based on biological assumption that happiness equals pleasure to be happy is no more and no less than experiencing pleasant bodily sensations when we experience pleasant bodily sensations we become happy our biochemistry limits the volume and duration of these sensations we have already seen that a man a person cannot be happy always the duration would be less only way to make people experience a high level of happiness over an extended period of time is to manipulate their biochemical system if the scientist could manipulate biochemical system the people would experience happy happiness all the time but that definition of happiness is contested by some scholars also this definition of happiness that is um 
uh, what do you say always experiencing pleasant body sensations that contributes to your happiness that is uh, contested by some scholars also in a famous study daniel kahneman winner of the nobel prize in economics asked people to recount a typical work day daniel kahneman is an uh, israeli american psychologist author of the work thinking fast and slow um that who was a winner of nobel prize in economic studies in 2002 daniel kahneman he asked people to recount a typical work day going through it episode by episode and evaluating how much they enjoyed or disliked each moment this work is about happiness so this daniel kahneman the uh, nobel prize winner asked people uh, to go through the uh, their day episode by episode part by part and to evaluate how much they enjoyed the day and how much they disliked the day he discovered what seems to be a paradox in most people's views of their lives adu or contradictory aitana aalk findings endanu thoniyathu take the work involved in raising a child kunnigalumayittana associate cheynathu kahneman found that when counting moments of joy and moments of drudgery bringing up a child turns out to be a rather unpleasant affair ഒരു കുട്ടീനെ റേസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന സമയത്ത് ഒരു കൊച്ചു കുഞ്ഞിനെ റേസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന സമയത്ത് എന്താ പറയുക ഒരുപാട് ജോയ്ഫുൾ ആയിട്ടുള്ള സിറ്റുവേഷൻസും ഉണ്ട് അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഡള്ളായിട്ട് തോന്നുന്ന ഒരുപാട് കാര്യങ്ങളും ഉണ്ട് ഇപ്പോൾ എങ്ങനെ വന്നാലും കൂടുതലും കൊച്ചു കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങളെ നോക്കുന്ന കാര്യത്തിനാണെങ്കിൽ ഡള്ളായിട്ടാണ് തോന്നുന്നതെന്നാണ് ഡാനിയൽ പറയുന്നത് ദാറ്റ് വെൻ കൗണ്ടിങ് found that when counting moments of joy moments of drudgery rendu karyangale nokkuvaanengilum bringing up a child turns out to be a unpleasant affair aitana daniel nu thoniyathu why it is an unpleasant affair because it consists largely of changing nappies sleepless nights for mothers washing dishes along with that dealing with the temper tantrums kutel ga out bayangara deshiyo aitulla swabhavathulla kutel anengil allengi bayangara kusrudeyulla kutel anengil avarude pinnale nadakkuna situations which nobody likes to do as per daniel yet most parents declare that their children are their chief source of happiness endakke anengilum parents parayunnathu parents ne sambandhichiduthulla machinu amme സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം അവരുടെ കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങളാണ് അവരുടെ ലൈഫിലെ ഏറ്റവും വലിയ ഹാപ്പിനെസ് എന്ന് പക്ഷെ ഈ ഹാപ്പിനെസ് എൻജോയ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോഴും അവരുടെ ഉള്ളിലുള്ളത് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അവർ ഫേസ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അൺപ്ലസൻ്റ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഇങ്ങനെയുള്ള സിറ്റുവേഷൻസ് ആണ് പിന്നെ എങ്ങനെയാണ് ഇവർക്ക് ഹാപ്പിനെസ് ആണ് കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങളാണ് അവരുടെ ലൈഫിലെ ഹാപ്പിനെസ് എന്ന് പറയാൻ പറ്റുന്നത് ദിസ് ഇസ് എ പാരഡോക്സ് ദിസ് ഇസ് റിയലി എ കോൺട്രഡിക്റ്റിംഗ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് ഡസ് ഇറ്റ് മീൻ ദാറ്റ് പീപ്പിൾ ഡോണ്ട് റിയലി നോ വാട്ട് ഇസ് ഗുഡ് ഫോർ ദം that is one option another is that the findings demonstrate that happiness is not the surplus of pleasant over unpleasant moments appo chala scholars endha parayunnathu happiness ennu parayunnathu pleasant situations maatramalla unpleasant moments ne kaalum pleasant situations kudunadalla happiness ennu parayunnathu but happiness consists in seeing one's life in its entirety as meaningful and worthwhile but in instead happiness ennu parayunnathu oru life inde meaningfulness ilana happiness undavunnathu there is an important cognitive and ethical component to happiness ee happiness ne sambandhichidathollam oru cognitive aayittulla oru element undu that is um, ഒരു ശരിക്കും മനസ്സിലാക്കേണ്ട ഒരു എലമെൻ്റ് ഉണ്ട് ഹാപ്പിനെസ്സിനെ സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ആർ വാല്യൂസ് മേക്ക് ഓൾ ദ ഡിഫറൻസ് നമ്മുടെ വാല്യൂസ് ആണ് ഏറ്റവും കൂടുതൽ ഡിഫറൻസ് ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്നത് ടു വെദർ വി സി ആസൽസ് എസ് മിസറബിൾ സ്ലേവ്സ് ടു എ ബേബി ഡിക്റ്റേറ്റർ ഓർ എസ് ലവിങ് ലവിംഗ്ലി നോച്ചറിങ് എ ന്യൂ ലൈഫ് ഒരു കുഞ്ഞിനെ സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം നമ്മൾ ആ കുഞ്ഞിനെ റേസ് ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ട് വരുന്നത് ഭയങ്കര ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടുള്ള കാര്യമാണെന്ന് നമ്മൾ ചിന്തിച്ചാൽ ശരിക്കും യാ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ നോട്ട് ഗിവ് യു ഹാപ്പി ബട്ട് Uh, if you are considering it as uh, nurturing a new life in the jindiki anangilo that gives you happy that gives you value then you will be turned to be a happy person as nietzsche put it nietzsche uh, was a french german philosopher he was a critic he was a poet and who said that dog is dead in his famous work das peak zarathustra 
uh, and now he's talking about Nije. As Nije put it, Nije Parnyad answered, if you have a why to live, you can bear almost any now. Anyhow, Uru Endanana Jivikina the Endanola Uru answer Kitikanya. Why are you living Adanola answer Kitikanya? You can bear everything. A meaningful life can be extremely satisfying even in the midst of hardship. Ningle life in Arthamanda the Ningle Katoni Kanya. You can live happily in the midst of hardship, whereas a meaningless life is a terrible ordeal, no matter how comfortable it is. Life in Uru meaning in Tonanilla non Dangal Ningle Etra. Comfortable on an situation and Nalam, you will always experience your life as a very much unpleasant or a or a prolonged long long um, days you may feel. But if you find meaning in that, you will be happy and comfortable. Though people in all cultures and eras have felt the same type of pleasures and pains. The meaning they have ascribed to their experiences probably varied widely. People experience pleasures and pains would be similar, but the meaning they gave to the experiences are different. If so, the history of happiness might have been far more turbulent than biologists imagine. It's a conclusion that doesn't necessarily favor modernity. The conclusions that biologists got wouldn't be favoring modernity because modern people may find the life as meaningless. Why? Assessing life minute by minute, medieval people certainly had it rough. Medieval time, people were not living with all the comforts. However, if they believed the promise of everlasting bliss in the afterlife, they would, if they would believe in eternity, they may well have viewed their lives as far more meaningful and worthwhile than modern secular people who in the long, long term can expect nothing but complete and meaningless oblivion. Earlier people or, the, or we can say more religiousistic people now, they think that after the life in earth, they have a life with, uh, with the union with God. They have an afterlife. Life here is just a um, matter of moment. But the life after, after life in the earth, on earth, their life is going to be with God and it would be meaningful and the deeds they are doing here on earth is accountable because the life here determines the life after the death they are going to be heaven or going to be in hell like that so earlier people they believed in afterlife in eternal life so they found their life as meaningful but modern secular people they don't expect anything uh, like after life and they can find what life they are living on earth would be meaningless asked are you satisfied with your life as a whole people in the middle ages might have scored quite highly in a subjective well-being questionnaire questionnaire so people in the middle ages would be more satisfied with their life but now if you ask a modern era person um, are you satisfied with your life are you okay are you happy the qu answer would be different answer is questionable so our medieval ancestors were happy because they found meaning to life and collective delusions about the afterlife so uh, it, it is author is saying it may be a delusion about afterlife yes as long as nobody punctured their fantasies why shouldn't they so he's saying that uh, earlier nobody questioned it 
and they were happy about their delusions about the afterlife see this is purely anti religiousistic but um, we have to study as far as we can tell from a purely scientific viewpoint human life has no absolute meaning from scientific view point they won't mix it with religion they're saying human life is has no meaning humans are the outcome of blind evolutionary processes humans are not created by god but outcome of blind evolutionary processes and it has no purpose or goal in its life so there is no afterlife as per the author and earlier people were living in a collective delusion our actions are not part of some divine cosmic plan and if planet earth were to blow up tomorrow morning universe would probably keep going about its business as usual our actions are not part of some divine cosmic plan and if planet earth so nobody is taking care of earth and he's saying that if the planet earth to where to blow up tomorrow morning universe would probably earth would be destroyed but again universe wouldn't be affected by it and it would go with its usual business as far as we can tell at this point that nobody is controlling the earth it is not part of some divine cosmic plan human subjectivity wouldn't be missed hence any meaning that people ascribe to their lives is just a delusion so if people are giving life uh, meaning life uh, meaning uh, people are giving meaning to their lives that means it's just a delusion for them it's a it's a false belief the other worldly meanings medieval people found in their lives were no more deluded than the modern humanist nationalist and capitalist meanings modern people find they were living in a delusion the scientist who says her life is meaningful because she increases the store of human knowledge soldier who declares that his life is meaningful because he fights to defend his homeland an entrepreneur who finds meaning in building a new company are no less delusional they all are delusion uh, they all are living in a delusion because there is no meaning if a person finds scientist finds meaning in life uh, when he finds a uh, human knowledge or a soldier when he declares that his life is also meaningful entrepreneur who says his life is also meaningful as he built a new company all these things are just delusions you can find you cannot find any meaning to your life are all delusions like medieval counterparts who found meaning uh, in reading scriptures or going on a crusade or building new cathedral all these things are mere delusions or uh, um, fantasies so perhaps happiness is synchronizing one's personal delusions of meaning with the prevailing collective delusions so he's saying that perhaps author is saying that perhaps happiness is like uh, if a person's delusions will go together with uh, the delusions of the society maybe uh, happiness can be achieved as long as my personal narrative is in line with the narratives of the people around me if my beliefs is same as the belief of the people around me i can convince myself that my life is meaningful um then i can say my life is meaningful and find happiness in that belief i can happy in i can be happy uh, in that belief this is quite a depressing conclusion happiness does happiness really depend on self delusion um does it really depend on some fantasies believing uh, something that is not true is it like that so that is what all about chemical happiness and the meaning of life it is in a form of some argumentative mode i can say this work so we all together we saw he's speaking about chemical happiness happiness is about um, the uh, happiness determines the chemical actions that are happening inside our brain and uh, the functions of serotonin dopamine and oxytocin and we found his references of uh, brave new world and uh, 1984 two novels and he spoke about french revolution and uh, then he talk about um, medieval 
French peasant and a banker and their happiness level would be same like that and uh, and about delusions uh, the, this life is just a delusion that is what he is saying whatever you find you may find it as all these are the happiness you experience is just a delusion you cannot really say that what your experience is your experience is ultimately happiness that is wrong because all, everything is delusion around you your happiness is not determined by the things you are achieving your happiness is just determined by the chemical actions that are happening in your brain or chemical um, due to the chemical secretions happening in your brain that determines their happiness whatever you find all around that is if you're believing in afterlife or whatever it is that is a delusion and if you find it happy then that is a delusion and if you are achieving in your life and you find it as meaningful that is mere delusion because happiness is depended upon the uh, happiness serotonin secretion in your brain and uh, the level of serotonin actually determines your happiness the rest everything is just delusion that is all about the work chemical happiness and the meaning of life thank you